First responders, those who dedicate their lives to helping others, are not getting the help they need. There's a stigma, a fear surrounding mental health. Because of it, people are dying. This week, we are dedicating a team of journalists to investigate the effects of post-traumatic stress on first responders. Brooke Hash takes us to Covington, Kentucky. It's a chapter of Joe Terry's life she tries to keep closed, but the memories of her late husband, Chip, carry open wounds. She had no idea the burdens he carried during his 26 years with the Covington Fire Department. I just assumed he was dealing with it. Fast forward to his retirement speech in 2012. What people don't see at three o'clock in the morning is when, when a young lieutenant has to put two toddlers and their grandmother in a body bag. You know, a 16 year old boy hangs himself with an electrical cord. How do you close your eyes at night after you do that? You make that run. You know, I, I've, I've seen people shoot, shoot themselves in the head I've seen children beaten and burned. A chilling tale of what life is like as a first responder, and yet Joe admits most who heard it then believed it was just part of the job. Even then, in 2012, we weren't talking about post-traumatic stress in first responders. We weren't. I never heard of it. I didn't hear of it until 2017. That's the year he checked himself into a hospital for suicidal thoughts. Chip spent a few weeks in counseling and was given a business card of someone who specialized in PTSD. A week later, he was dead. Committed suicide. Joe says he'd bought a gun in secret using a credit card they never used. And I said, um, I'm going to bed. And he said, don't wait up for me. The next morning, a knock at the front door. I saw three men in suits and I knew, I knew. I just said, tell me he's okay. They couldn't. How did I not help him? The pain, it must be. <laughs> Inside of them to want to give up. That I have been his partner for 31 years. And I didn't recognize it. The truth is no one did. Mental illness did not come up in conversation before Chip's death, but it does now. You can see that the culture's already changing. Now, we're much more apt to talk about our feelings. We are, you know, we have a bad run, we're out on the floor. Joe has made it her mission to change the course for other first responders who need help, but don't know where to find it. Alcoholism, divorce, infidelity, it's huge in this population of people. Well, why? Um, it's because they're trying to cope with mechanisms that really aren't the answer to their problem. Last year, more firefighters, EMTs, and police officers died by suicide than in the line of duty. You didn't hear about it because departments don't release details, and less than 5% have suicide prevention programs. We owe it to these first responders to get them the mental health that they need. And the only way I feel like we can do that is with awareness. It's a hard topic to discuss, but one we hope you will take home with you. Joe Terry continues to help local first responders struggling with PTSD. She told me just this week she escorted a suicidal firefighter to a center near D.C., which specializes in treatment for these firefighters. You can learn more about the Center of Excellence on our website, along with many more resources and hotlines right now at whas11.com.